Hey guys what if Naruto was lies beyond Naruto x Ona x Usaka movie. Standing at the edge of a cliff surrounded by thunder strikes that came from the sky covered in dark clouds, in front of a raging sea was a man standing firmly, his white cape fluttered due to the unforgiving wind, but despite all of it the man standing at the edge of the cliff held no fear as his blue eyes hardened with his spiky blonde hair fluttering wildly, making it look more spiky. His outfit consists of a burnt orange high-collared jacket, with a wrist and hem of the jacket having three ring patterned black stripes in it, his black pants tucked within his black high-cut sandals. His hands cross in his chest with his right hand completely covered in white bandaged, in front of him, there is nothing but disaster, as the raging sea swallowed the surrounding island with its massive waves, the thunder strikes the ground and the trees destroying everything and burning it, behind him the mountains has been shattered and destroyed. Black smokes raising from the ground towards the sky as the villages burns, followed by the screams of the tortured souls, but the boy who looks to be of age 17 or 18 paid it no heed as he stood at the edge of the cliff with a look of determination in his face. Ignoring the tons of bodies laying behind him. It is as if he no longer worries about anything and has put all of his attention to the unseen foe that was standing hundreds of feet away from him, he did not even flinch when a thunder strike the cliff he was standing on and reveals himself to be unharmed, he did not even bat at an eyelash when a powerful gust of wind passed him by. He no longer fears anything for he has nothing to lose, for he already has lost everything from the monster walking towards him. Standing hundreds of meters away from him, as if the raging sea wasn't even bothering it, its massive body towered even the tallest of mountains, its lone ringed crimson eyes with nine rings glared at him with nothing but hatred and desire for destruction, its ten massive tail swings hypnotically, and every time it would sway. The sea would unleash another tall and damaging tsunami that would engulf an unfortunate island. Its massive maw opens as it raised its head in the air, as if it was going to swallow the moon, a circular blood-red orb the size of a small hill appeared above its open maw, as black energy circled around it, as if it is absorbing all the evils of the world. Terrifyingly the ten-tailed beast swallowed the massive ball of energy, and not a second later its whole body started bulging as if it is going to explode, but before it happens, it opens its massive maw once again, and from its maw, a long massive beam of crimson energy emerged and flew towards the boy. When it appears that the beam was going to swallow the boy the beam started condensing into a giant ball of destructive energy as it hurled towards him, but the boy did not appear to be worried at all, as he stared the destructive energy when it appeared as if it was going to swallow him, the boy finally raised his left hand and in a shocking spectacle, the boy swings it as if backhanding something. And after doing so, something like a miracle happened as the destructive energy that disintegrates everything it passed on changed its direction as the boy slaps it away and hurled towards an unsuspecting mountain that suddenly got engulfed when it exploded, erasing everything in it, along with all the living and non-living beings in there. But the boy knew for a fact that there is no longer any living being in that place, for he could no longer feel any trace of a human being or even animals in this world, for all of them had been devoured or killed by this massive evil being in front of him. Let's end this Shinju, once and for all, this will be the last time that you will appear, the boy merely whispered those words, and yet it resonated with the air and were carried all over the place, had there been any living being they would hear it. And how are you going to do that boy, the mocking voice of the massive creature in front of him, boomed all over the place, with its eyes twinkling in amusement and its voice dripping with sarcasm. The boy's blue eyes morphed and to the shock of the monster in front of him, his eyes turned into something so similar to his yet so different, Bane's was surrounding the edge of the boy's eyes and instead or purplish red like the monster, his was pure blood red and has more powerful glow into it, it looks so much like those accursed man's eyes. The man who had took his freedom and sealed him into the moon. This, those were all the words that left the boy's mouth as the whole world suddenly got enveloped by golden pillar of energy, and had anyone in space looking they would see the whole planet glowing bright gold and reminiscent of the sun itself. No one in space knew what happened, but not a second later, when the massive planet got engulfed by golden energy it suddenly exploded, accompanied by a powerful shockwave that resonated all over the galaxy, shaking every planets and causing a massive amount of supernovas and creating a massive black hole that swallows all the debris. No one knew what happened, but in the far future, that massive explosion would become known as the Big Bang. Scene change. How long are you going to sleep? Said a person standing near the window with her arms in her hips as she taps her foot on the wooden floor with a stern look on her purple eyes, with her beautiful pink lip set into a scowl, I heard that your store was closed yesterday for reason unknown. But I am not going to let you skip work today without a proper excuse, and I know for a fact that you are not the sort of person who easily got sick, she forcefully opened the red curtain allowing the ray of sunlight to enter the room and flying straight to the person in bed face, along with lighting the room up showing the full appearance of the girl. 
She is a teenage girl with an attractive and mature face, accompanied by a cute slim figure, she has shoulder-length black hair cut into a bob cut style with bangs even out, she was wearing a red rim oval shaped spectacle and has purple mature eyes, she has a golden colored clip on her left side. Her outfit consists of a light shirt with detached sleeve and shoulder, less revealing her creamy white skin with a light blue garter supporting it and hiding the garter of her underwear, for bottom she wore a short blue shorts that stopped at her upper thigh and was wearing a long black socks which ends just above her knees. Now, stand up and get dressed and go to work, I took the time to come here just to make sure that you go to work, just because my sister is your employer does not mean that I should show you favoritism, now, get up, she finished with a scowl as she removed the blanket from the person lying on the bed. It was a young man who appears to be of age 18 or 19, but instead of going into college Hess now working as a cook, although he was the one who chose that position because it is what he knows best due to him being the one to cook for his food all his life. The young man has neck-length golden blonde hair that blows whenever the sunlight hits it, he has elegant yet thin eyebrows, and from his lidded eyes, peaks a pair of glowing crystal clear blue eyes, his outfit consists of a white sleeping shirt and blue knee-length shorts, not too bad, considering that Hess only using it as a sleepwear. I'm too tired to go to work the young man mumbled, earning an annoyed glare from the girl who merely sighed in irritation. Don't give me that, it is you who said that you wanted to work, and I was even forced to buy that shop for you, because you said you wanted to work as pastry chef, the girl rebuked with a sigh as she walks towards the bed to force the young man to get up, she didn't really know the circumstances on how he got in her home back then. But all she knows was that he had already been there before she was born and was a part of her family, who acts as her elder sister advisor before he become her caretaker which is why when she was sent to study in the woman world to learn how the humans live, he came with her to be her guardian until he had deemed her fit enough to live on her own in the human world, instead of returning to the underworld, he decided to stay in the human world to live like a normal human. Although Shes annoyed by it, but she was happy that he decided to stay for she had become attached to him. After all whenever her sister is busy to play with her back then, he would always be there to entertain her, and whenever her parents are busy, he would be the one to teach her, for as long as she knows he had been a constant in her life that everything she knows had only been thought by him. She even doubt that she would be in here had it not been for him, so it was actually obvious for her to be so attached to him, which is why she was so happy when he decided to stay despite her not showing it. Although she was sure that he knows it because she was the one who volunteered to buy the pastry shop for him, even though she claims that it was only to thank him for everything that he had done for her, she was sure that without him, she would be more uptight and serious about life, although she still is but she knew how to enjoy life. Mayu knows just how much annoying he could be whenever he sees her starting to act like a frigid who knows nothing but studying and working, it was him who taught her everything she knew and understand in life, although the way he acts like a lazy bum irritates her sometimes, even though he used to be so hardworking back then. Them being lazy wasn't really the one that irritates her it's just that it made her realize that she do not really know anything about him, because his actions as of now contradicts his actions back then. Now, get up, she firmly shook his shoulders, she wasn't the kind of person who would wear outgoing clothes like this, but since there is no school today, and it's a special occasion due to her not having work today, means she could spend some free time with him. Ugh, fine, the young man finally got out of bed with his hair completely ruffled as he walked towards the bathroom lazily. Hurry up, the girl commanded sternly while the man waved his bandage-covered hand, another one of the things she did not know of, she didn't really know what that bandage is for, and it is impossible for it to be an injury, because for as long as she know him, he had already been wearing that bandage. She did not want to pry, but she admit that there are times when she wanted to ask what that bandage is for, although she speculates that it must be some kind of seal or something, it was due to the strange markings in it, also because he once stated that he would only remove it when he meets an opponent that he could not beat as he is. She glanced towards the bathroom door when she saw him came out with his hair now tidy, although still retaining its spiky disposition, but it looked much more presentable now, Hess now wearing a long sleeve white button-up shirt, accompanied by black pants and black shoes, while he tightened black apron around his waist, he got his apron mix with his clothing, since his shop is just downstairs. The first floor of the building is the pastry shop while the second floor was his room. I get that you have a free time, but why are you here though? The blonde looked up before he shook his head right, don't answer that it's Saturday. Even if it is Saturday, is there a problem with me being here? The girl responded calmly with narrowed eyes if there is, just say so and I shall leave immediately. After hearing that the boy immediately started panicking. Ah. No that is not what I mean, it's just that you don't usually visits me, so it is a surprise there is no meaning in it. The girl nodded her head with a firm look on her face I told you that it'll be visiting your shop once I am finally free, if only to see if you really are working properly, I am kind of relief when I started hearing from the other students about this shop, she nodded her head in approval, it seems your pastries are really popular. 
So I thought you are doing your job perfectly, but imagine my surprise when I heard that you were closed yesterday, yet you did not inform me. The blonde looked away sheepishly as he scratches his head ah, well about that I have some stuff to do he, he chuckled nervously, while the girl merely narrowed her eyes towards him. And that is. It's complicated, she wanted to ask what he meant, but refrain herself from doing so when she saw the look in his face, it was the same look she used to see in his face when she was still a kid, but could not understand what it is, but now that she could understand what it is, she could not bring herself to ask why he had that kind of expression. Very well, I shall no longer ask what it is, but now on to the reason why I am here, every time I hear someone gossiping about the hot blonde pastry chef, I could not help but be curious, they say that your pastries are top class, I've tasted your cooking, but I know for a fact that making pastries and cooking foods are two different things, so I wanted to have a taste. Is that so? The blonde murmured with a sly smile as the both of them went downstairs and entered the shop, while the girl merely took a sit in front of the counter, while the blonde went inside the kitchen, I could not help but get the feeling that you didn't come here just to taste my pastry, but because you are jealous. Because I am spending time with other girls while you are busy sitting in a chair signing paperwork. S shut up, ahem, she scowled with her cheeks tinted pink before calming herself with a cough in her knuckles, it is not for that reason, but you are correct, I came here not only to taste your pastries, but for another reason. Business related. The tone in the blonde's voice was serious, indicating that he knew the reason why she had come to him. Yes, a few weeks ago I felt an intrusion on the barrier that you had set, it wasn't really surprising because usually there are visitors that come here in Kuo to negotiate, but the thing is the intruders came in her not for negotiation, but for something else, usually there would only be three to five, but the intruders has an army of rogue exorcists. Ah, four fallen angels along with those rogue exorcists, the blonde nodded his head, not that she could see because he was in the kitchen. So you knew, yes they are and I believe they are here to observe somebody, do you know who it is? The girl asked as the blonde finally came out with a box of different colored cookies with jams in his hand. Yep, they are probably here to observe or possibly kill the wielder of the boosted gear, the blonde responded with a smile as he handed the box of cookies towards the shocked girl. Are you sure about that Naruto? The wielder of the boosted gear is in here. She asked in shock, if the wielder of the boosted gear is here she would have known it as it was impossible to escape her radar, especially if someone had such powerful sacred gear. Yep, the now named Naruto nodded his head with a grin in fact Hess going in your school and is also a regular customer in here. In school. That's strange, if that user of the sacred gear in Kuo High then she should known it by now, she was surprised when Naruto gently tapped her on the nose with his finger. Don't worry about it, you didn't sense him because the presence of dear old Drake in him was too weak, probably because he has no training and was completely unaware that he the boosted gear in him, that is also one of the mysteries surrounding him, has throwing the name of the big shots, as if he knew them personally, anyway. Don't worry too much about that if their presence is bothering you, then he'll take care of it immediately, just take this and enjoy, you come here for this right Sona-chan. He insert one of the cookies in her mouth with a playful smile on his face. She would have reprimand him for doing something unnecessary, had it not been for the flavor of the cookie exploding in her mouth, she could not describe the taste, but it was Naruto-ish like, it was a taste that nobody could ever emulate, a taste impossible to achieve unless you are Naruto. This she gently picks up another one, while lying it with her left hand on her cheeks with a small blush on her face, is surprisingly good, no wonder this is so popular. Yep, I even have pure-blooded vampires as regular customers, Naruto grinned at her as she snaps her head towards him with a look of surprise. When are you planning to tell that to me Naruto? Her voice was harsh as is her glare. Well, I just did, he tilted his head with a smile, earning a twitch from her before she sighed and merely popped another cookie in her mouth, too stressed already to think of other things. So, do you any plan for the day? Naruto asked as he started wiping the glass counter with a cloth, while Sona merely kept silent as she ate the cookies. Nothing much, I am practically free today, and I allowed my peerage to have some freedom for today, they said they are going to the pool. Why not go with them? It's not like you have anything to do anyway. Sona shook her head in annoyance you are an idiot. Eh? Hey, what do you mean? Nothing, with that she merely kept eating asking for seconds when she ran out of cookies while pretending to ignore the childish man in front of her. Fallen angels and rogue priests huh? Hess definitely going to use this as a blackmail for that perverted fallen angel. Oh, right Hess currently short on staff, those people would surely come in handy. Unnoticeable by Sona, a hidden smirk appeared on Naruto's face. The Shinju is an omnipotent being of infinite power, there is nothing that it cannot do, which is why it is impossible to kill, it is also the reason why your sage of six path simply sealed it away, because he knew that there is no method to destroy or much less kill it. 
the person covered in nothing but light as if it was merely a being created of light, explains towards the person floating in a never-ending space of white, and yet, you have done something that shouldn't be possible, you have made the impossible possible, and that is really impressive, I am not even sure if the word impressive is enough to describe what you did. The blonde man simply listened and refused to speak, not because he did not want to, but because he no longer has the strength to do so, as his body and energy has been completely exhausted by his unleashing all his energy in one go, so he simply allow himself to flow without any resistance, not even caring where this will take him. For that I applaud you, at least I wanted to, but without the Shinju everything will just cease to exist, his existence is a must as his existence was the one who keeps all the universes intact it was his existence that gave life to every living thing, not only this dimension, but all dimensions that existed for the Shinju is the one who created it all. It may be evil to you, but the Shinju is still an almighty being who had brought life in existence, the light person whatever released a remorseful sigh and without it, every world will cease to exist, and as of now the dimensional void is starting to deteriorate as cracks started appearing in it. It won't take long a month or a few weeks perhaps, but it will surely crumble and would be destroyed. Why the blonde forced his voice out, so it came out as croaked and hoarse why are you telling me this? Are you trying to slap my failure in my face? The blonde weakly opens his eyes, and the being made of light noted just how dim it is, as if it no longer held the life that it used to have. The being of light shook its head in remorse no, I did not meant it that way, so I am sorry if it comes out that way what I am trying to say, is that because of what happens this whole universe along with all the others. The very existence is starting to collapse without the Shinju keeping it together even when sealed, it still held tremendous amount of power to hold the universe together and keep it intact, but now the Shinju is gone, the light being paused, allowing the tired blonde to absorb and process all the information given to him, which is why we had come into a decision. And that is. The blonde weakly asked with his eyes, now partially opens because he simply cannot open it wide now because it was dropping on its own. Naruto Uzumaki, as the slayer of the Shinju I am really sorry I really do not want to do this, the light being voice trembled as if it was trying to contemplate if he should say what he needed to say, but it was clearly obvious that the being of light do not wish it and did not want him to hear what it is going to say, we the overseer of realities have decided to punish you for this misconduct. What you have done is a crime not only to humanity, but to everything in existence for you have endangered them all due to your careless action, the light's voice cracked at this point, the judgment has been made, you are hereby sentenced to become the new Shinju and carry the burden of the world and keep all realities intact. It will be lonely and painful, but we the overseers of all realities declared you guilty of the crime against all beings in existence, as such you deserve this punishment the light stopped, as if taking a deep shaky breath, I am so sorry its voice trembled if it helps. I made sure that you will not become like the first Shinju who lost its mind and become nothing but a creature filled with nothing but hatred, I am really sorry, this is not my decision, it was forced onto me. The blonde despite receiving such a news, instead of wailing and grieving, instead of justifying his case the blonde simply nodded his head as if he had deserved it, it is as if the boy had already accepted that fact before it was even brought to him, it is as if he is blaming himself for everything, maybe because he really did blame himself for the death of everyone in the elemental nations. Because he was weak that it happened, because he did not take action sooner that all of it ended up happening. Maybe he really deserved it, as such, instead of complaining he simply accepted the unjust punishment with a weak nod of his head, despite the tears that is streaming down his face. The being made of light appears to be looking away as if it cannot stand the sight of the crying blonde, as if it didn't have the heart to look at the blonde who was silently weeping, because it knew just how unfair it is, it's just of all billions of dimensions and universe in existence, the blonde boy had been unfortunately born in a world where the Shinju reigned terror. It is as if the boy has been made to suffer from the very start, he lived his life raising through every challenge and facing life full of vigor and determination, but seeing the boy who was the epitome of determination and willpower simply accepting his fate of never-ending pain with a simple nod and without even a voice of complaint. It hurts, it hurts a lot, and not because they were the one who sentenced him doesn't mean they do not feel guilty, in fact if they could they wanted to reward him, but they simply had no one that could become the new Shinju other than him, for the slayer of the Shinju could only become the new Shinju. It is unfair and unjust, but they really have nothing for they are not strong enough to stop the destruction of all the universes, for they are simply just created by the fragments of Shinju from billions of years ago, they rent even a fraction of its strength, so there is nothing they can do to stop the destruction that its death caused. Only by sacrificing this boy would they be able to prevent all life from being annihilated, and it is a sacrifice that they are willing to make, despite how painful it is for them. But choosing the life of all the living beings and all the worlds over this boy, it was no surprise that they will choose the former rather than the latter. 
I am so sorry the being of light turned its back and started fading as if it was walking away leaving the young man floating in the never-ending voice, who was grieving at the fact that he'll no longer be able to see his friends of even his family. If the creature of light could weep, it would do so, but it just doesn't have the ability to do so. Zero, zero, zero. I can save the world and all life in it, but I cannot save the life of all the people that matters to me, the most Naruto whispered to himself while he was closing his shop after Sona had left, it was late in the afternoon and the sky were starting to get dark with the moon now up in the sky. Closing already? A soft and melodious voice rang from behind him, he wasn't really surprised or anything though since he had already felt that person before they even arrived, so without turning back he replied. Yeah, there is a lot of activity going on in this particular city, I don't want my shop to get damaged if something happens, so I'm closing early since it's bad for business. So you knew. It wasn't really hard to notice, since they are practically doing whatever they are doing in the open, and without even trying to hide their energies, they're kind of arrogant if you ask me, at least your exorcists are trying to be discreet despite failing miserably, Naruto shook his head sadly though, it's practically impossible to hide from me. Haha, <laughs> no wonder father regards you highly, you really are amazing, you already knew him here before I even announced my presence, Naruto finally turned around after closing the metal sliding door to protect his glass door, which was reinforced with tons of defensive runs and ceiling tags. Now that he had turned to look, the person speaking to him has the appearance of a beautiful young woman with silky and curly golden hair that flows like a river, with beautiful pair of blue eyes, wearing a white long silky dress that hides her beautiful body, although the most noticeable thing about her was her breast. He had seen enough of them considering the fact that devils usually did not care if someone saw their bodies, and this woman's breast is the finest and most beautiful perky and sagless breast he had ever seen. It is the stuff of legends. And growing from her back was twelve beautiful angel wings that glows like the sun and twinkles like a star, just like her innocent blue eyes. Let's cut to the case, why have you visited me Gabriel? Naruto parroted the same thing he had told Sona earlier, it was also the reason why he kindly asked Sona to head home by herself, because he knew that she would be coming, and her arriving here while Sona is still here would probably end badly. No matter how logical the young heiress might be, the fact that she is still a devil, and that angels and fallen angels are her mortal enemies, it won't be a surprise if she shows a lot of animosity, even if she tries to hide it. Gabriel pouted you are so mean you know, and you used to play with me back then when I was a little girl, and even then the game you played with me are for adults only. The scowl immediately marred Naruto's face if my memory serves me well it is you who would always drags me around demanding me to play with you, and it was your idea to play doctor, even though I rejected it vehemently. The Gabriel tilted her head with a small giggle as she remembered those times when he would panic due to her asking him to examine her in an innocent way, although she was unaware of the innuendo Naruto wasn't, so it is normal for him to be uncomfortable to have a little girl ask him to examine her. The and God almost come into blows after witnessing that sight. Anyway, don't try to change the subject tell me why you are here. He didn't want to sound like an asshole but he had made it clear that he didn't want anything to do with their family feud, the reason why he left heaven and went to the underworld before coming to the human world is because he had gotten tired of listening to their arguments. They are family yet they cannot get along due to their different outlook and bias opinions, if only they could come into an understanding, then everything would be great, but he had lived long enough to know that such thing won't happen, at least not until something happens that would threaten not only the three factions but the whole world. Gabriel released a heaving sigh with a frown on her beautiful face heaven is in chaos. Because of the Excalibur fragments right? Naruto interrupted, it wasn't really new to him. Gabriel nodded her head sadly yes, the Excalibur fragment started missing, three of them are currently missing, and we suspect the fallen angels had it, at least the rogue ones, since we knew for a fact that Azazel and I won't even care about it. Naruto nodded his head, Azazel might be a mad scientist, but he isn't the kind of person who would steal the Excalibur fragments just to sate his curiosity about something, and he knew for a fact that Azazel won't do something that would cause chaos that would probably end up in a full-scale war. The perverted idiot is a womanizer but not a warmonger, he likes peace, has like Serzich's in that regard. Do you know who has it? Gabriel asked with a frown on her face while Naruto hummed while crossing his arms. I have a hunch, but I am not sure if it is really him, Naruto shook his head as he started walking towards the back door with Gabriel following closely behind him. Oh, quit it, I have no doubt that you already knew who it is, but didn't want to release names until you are sure about them, Gabriel commented as she gently shoves his shoulder, knowing about his ability to see and feel everything, Hess like an omnipotent being despite him claiming it to be false. I just don't want to make a false assumption and start another feud because I messed up and had given you a false name, Naruto shook his head while he leans his body on the back door while Gabriel stopped in front of him. 
but why would they steal the Excalibur, it's not like it's as powerful as it's used to be, even a low class monster that has a lot of experience, would surely beat an inexperienced Excalibur fragments user, Gabriel frowned, she didn't know of a method that could bring back the Excalibur to its original state, because had she know about it, she would have surely do it. Probably to incite war, that particular brother of yours is really a warmonger, enough to stoop so low as to stealing just to start a war, Naruto shook his head sadly at the sad attempt of that certain idiot of starting a war. So is him Gabriel sighed sadly, and for Naruto to see her like that was a bit of a blow, considering that he was used to see the beautiful angel being energetic and ditzy every time, and to see her looking so troubled tug at his fatherly instinct. Don't worry, for a war to happen despite the three factions hating each other guts is extremely unlikely, unless there is another faction working in the shadows to start a war, instead of focusing on such trivial things, you should tell your brother to focus on governing the heaven better, there are forces out there that would not stop unless they see all the other factions burns into the ground. Naruto advises to Gabriel Woe's frown which cold get any more deeper scowl for the first time. I know I heard about them from Michael Nye, about the cow's brigade run by the Auroboros dragon, but how could we combat something of that level? You don't, the Auroboros dragon has no other plan than to remove the Great Red from her home, it's not her, you should be worried about instead, you should worry about the monsters who are trying to pull the strings behind her back, Naruto gently opens the back door and opens it, meaning that the conversation is over, though if something really threatening happens. Something that would endanger the whole humanity then it'll move, just like what I told Serzich's back then I would stay neutral, as long as no innocent will be harmed, but if the normal people get drags into this, then not even heaven will be saved from my wrath. Abriel nodded her head before she started heading towards the exit, although before she steps outside she took one last look at him ah I know that you are thinking that I only came here for business, that may be true, but there is also another reason why I came here. And that is. Naruto raised an eyebrow. It has been a few hundred years since we last seen each other Won't to be normal for me to try visiting one of the most important people in my life. The day that you left heaven made me really sad, and I missed you a lot, so I wanted to see you, and this happening is the best excuse I have him sorry, Gabriel apologized, while Naruto's eyes softened while he released a sigh when he saw the greenish gem glinting on her chest area. It's okay, you can visit me anytime I don't mind him sorry too, I'm just too stressed out Naruto apologized as he walks towards her and gently patted her cheek. It's okay, it'll be visiting you from time to time then, if that is really okay. Gabriel looks at him with a hesitant smile which turns into a full wide one when he nodded his head, after that she was engulfed in a bright light and disappeared though not before sending a glance towards the tallest building a few kilometers away from them. Naruto stretched his neck before he turned his head and appeared to be looking into a blank space. Well then, let's take care of those eavesdropping bird brains, with that Naruto disappeared in a gust of wind. Zero zero zero. Standing at the top of a building a few kilometers away from the Uzumaki pastissery, three strange people with pairs of black wings on their back, accompanied by several priest-wearing people, was observing the ongoing conversation between the blonde man and the beautiful angel. Tch, so it's true those bastards are really planning to wipe us out just like what Kakabiel Sama says, and what's so special with that guy anyway, I could not even feel anything from him, the middle-aged looking man standing in the middle wearing a long trench coat accompanied by a block fedora cursed in anger, we should kill them right now, before they could even wipe us out. Idiot. The other fallen angel standing beside him hissed in anger, she was a tall buxom woman with long navy blue hair that obscured her right eye, she was wearing a violet trench coat like top with a wide collar and open buttons revealing her cleavage and bountiful chest, she was wearing a high miniskirt revealing her long luscious legs, as Azizel Sama told us to never antagonize that man. And us being here is already disobeying Azizel Sama's ordered, and even if that man wasn't really that tough, then we will still be in trouble, because that is a seraph level angel. We can take them. All we need is to sneak and surprise them, no matter how strong she is if we manage to surprise her we can take her down. The man argued back with a glower towards the blue-haired girl, while lying the perfect breast of the angel. Shut up you old man, geez is there anything that goes in your pea-sized brain, other than fight and fight. The last fallen angel mock with a wry smile on her face, she has blonde hair tied in a twin tails and has a black bow on her head, her blue eyes, despite the innocent look in it has a hidden glint of sadism. She was wearing a black Lolita dress with white frills with white thigh socks and black shoes. Why you? The middle-aged man growled at the girl and appears to be readying himself to pounce on her. Stop it you two, she's about to leave eh? The blue-haired girl started before freezing when she saw the angel glance towards their location before disappearing in bright light, she didn't know if she was just hallucinating or the angel really looked at their direction. Her eyes then widened when the blonde man turns towards them when the angel disappeared oh shit has onto us. 
she shouted in panic and was about to fly away when their teammate prepared himself to attack the blonde man, along with the rogue exorcist. That's just what I wanted. The man exclaimed before he froze when the blonde disappeared and all he heard was a powerful sonic boom and what appears to be chirping of thousands of birds before his vision turned upside down. Don't seek. The blue-haired fallen angel shrieked in fear when she saw her teammate's head flew off his shoulders. While the blonde girl prepare herself to fly and flee, but was frozen when something held her on the shoulder, while the rogue exorcists surrounding them started dropping like sack of potatoes with hole in their chests. Slowly, she turns her head, and her face immediately paled when she saw the same blonde man standing behind her with his left hand on her shoulder, with his right hand holding what appears to be a lightning orb with sharp blades in it, it was as if the lightning was made to cut and pierce something. And she do not want to be that something so she didn't do anything to attack or move, since she knew that it will only make her situation worse. The blue-haired woman did not move from where she was standing on, not only because she didn't want to leave her comrade behind, but also because she cold moved due to the amount of pressure that this man was emitting, it was so intense that it frees them, and even though her legs were shaking, she did not fall due to her fear that if she did he would kill her. She could also see the pure terror on middle face, and the yellow liquid dripping down her thigh was enough for her to know just how scared her comrade is. As is Ulsama. Both of the fallen angels echoed in their mind as their body trembled in terror, Hess really a terrifying human. I am not going to ask you who sent you here to observe me because I know for a fact that Azizel won't do such a risky thing, so it is probably that idiot Kakabiel, now I know for a fact that you two are incredibly loyal to Azizel, because right now your face literally screams that you are shouting Azizel's name for help in your head, Naruto began with a cold look in his face. His eyes alone is enough to freeze even the flames of hell, due to the sheer intensity of in it, so, intuitive of asking who sent you, I am going to ask you why are you following Kakabiel's order, even though you knew that Kakabiel is no longer part of the Grigori, for he had gone rogue already. W what? The both of them asked at the same time with shaky voice, not understanding what he was talking about W what, do you mean he had gone our rogue? The blue-haired lady asked with her knees cluttering together. Naruto had a look of bewilderment in his face, you mean to tell me Azizel Haven told the other yet? Seeing the doubtful look on their face his jaw slackened that irresponsible idiot, he should have announced it already that Kakabiel has already betrayed the Grigori as he had joined the cow's brigade. Of course the warmonger didn't know that Azizel already knew even though Azizel was only letting him stay in the underworld, hoping that Kakabiel will see the error of his ways. Naruto shook his head with a sigh, that guy is so similar to his father, no matter how much he tried to deny it. Why you mean we are walking for a traitor, D does this mean we are traitors too, and that W we betrayed Azizel Sama. The blue haired lady trembled at the indication while her face immediately lost all of its color, when the blonde nodded, middle cold really react, due to her fear at being at a close proximity with such a monster, who annihilated their army faster than an eye could blink. Seeing the look of terror and of lost on the blue haired lady, Naruto sighed in pity, alright, he'll talk to Azizel for you, but for now since you have nowhere else to go, at this Naruto smiled innocently, you will be staying with me. Despite her fear the blue haired girl narrowed her eyes and asked why are you trying to help us? And offering us a home no less. Naruto's grin is what you would consider as evil I am not doing this for you, I am doing this for me. You will not get anything from me, I will not betray Azizel Sama more than I already did. H-E-H-E -E, no, I am not going to ask for information because I could simply ask Azizel himself if I wanted to know something, no, what I want is someone who know how to clean. Why? They also meant why he speak like he knows their leader personally. Because from now on, Naruto's blue eyes glow with his grin, turning real evil, as expected of the man who had stayed in the underworld for hundreds of years, you too will become intimate with the toilets. Both of the fallen angels paled. No let's go so you can start cleaning the toilets. 0000. zero, zero, zero. UWAA this is Japan. A cute teenage looking young girl commenting in awe as she looks around her surrounding, she just came out of the airport. She has long blonde hair with bangs split in the middle with a single strand of hair sticking upwards, her green eyes twinkle as she was mesmerized by her surroundings, her outfit consists of a full body covered nun out ift, with brown boots on her feet and a veil on her head. She was carrying a brown case with her which contains all of her clothings and other necessary stuffs. She didn't know why her superior told her to come to Japan, but for some reason she feels like she have a very beautiful future waiting for her in this country. She clasped her hand in a prayer and with a smile she uttered. Oh lord, please guide me on this journey, with that she started walking towards her destination. She really had a good feeling about this journey. Sitting on one of the comfortable chairs in the terrace located at the rooftop of Massive Castle, a sobbing little girl was sitting with her small fist on her face, while her knees covering her whole face. The girl was wearing a frilly purple sundress with short sleeves, white thigh-length socks and shoes. 
I just want to go and play I just want to have friends too the young girl sob, not even bothering to cover herself more, even though it's currently winter, although it wasn't snowing her surrounding was completely frozen in ice. The girl's braided white ponytail hair was glowing as if covered in ice. Why why do I have this ice powers? The small girl sob will always be alone because of this. The girl remove her hands on her face and hugs her legs, instead burying her face in it, lamenting the fact that she will never be able to leave the castle and have some friends due to her uncontrolled powers. The girl stiffened when a snowflake fell on her cheek, she unwrapped her arms around her leg and straightened it, but when she was about to stroke her cheek to remove the snowflake, a beautiful yet strange amaryllis flower fell down on her lap. The strange thing is the flower instead of red it was pure white as if it was made of snow. The beautiful flower that symbolizes radiant beauty, but the girl did not know of the significance of the flower yet. On instinct the girl picked the flower up before paling, after realizing that everything that she touches will turn into ice, but strangely instead of turning into ice the flower started glowing beautifully. What is this? The young girl mutters to herself not understanding the strange phenomenon that is happening in front of her. Did you like it? The voice from above rang out jerking the girl in surprise, the startled girl immediately looks up to see a strange person standing on thin air, unlike devils who uses their wings to fly this man was flying without the need to use his wings which was strange. A magician. She thought before she looks at his hand when she saw the soft glow emanating from it and from his palm a snowflake taking the form of a rabbit float surrounding him. D this is this yours? The girl timidly asked the stranger floating above her with his beautiful blonde, her almost blinding her and his equally beautiful blue eyes was calming, this person was the most sublime being she had ever seen in her whole life, which was incredibly short, considering the fact that she was only 7 years old. Do you want it? The strange man asked with a gentle smile in his face. The girl looks down at the flower in her hand, which was still glowing, and for some strange reason, the snow, which was permanently covering her hands was slowly disappearing. Can I? She looks up at him once again while the man smiled at a reply while nodding his head. Why are you crying? The man finally asked the girl of the reason why he approached her. The girl's lips was suddenly pulled into a thin line as she looks down, contemplating whether she should tell this stranger the reason why she was crying, and after him giving her such a beautiful gift, though she has been told by her parents not to talk to strangers, especially now that the underworld is in the middle of a war the one interacting with her could be a spy. But, for some strange reason this man wasn't emitting any bad aura around him, unlike the servants in her house who she knew definitely loathes due to her, freezing some of them sometimes due to her losing control over her powers. It's after some contemplation and seeing the man patiently waiting for her reply, she finally decided to tell him, if he leave now then at least it won't hurt as much due to him still being a total stranger to her it's because of my element. Element. The man parroted with a tilt of his head as he looks down on her. Yes the girl nodded her head as she tried to think of a better way to explain to him what she means, finding it hard to explain she finally decided to just tell it to him the way her private tutor explains it to her, are you familiar with the term devil he probably knew, since there is no way that he won't know considering the fact that he is in the underworld. The man nodded his head at her question. That's good it will be easier to explain it to him well you I am a devil, she turned to stare in his eyes, trying to see if there is any hint of fear or hate in them, but there wasn't, the man motions for her to continue, we devils have our own respective elements, for example the phoenix family they have inherent powers that are equivalent to that of the legendary bird, the phoenix. As such the phoenix family is known for their immortality and high level of regeneration, along with their ability to manipulate and generate fire and use it as if it is an extension of their bodies. The man nodded while the girl paused to take a breath before continuing, there are 72 different clans in the underworld, with their own respective inherent powers, I am from the Lucifuge family, a noble family of pure-blooded devils from the extra demons, and we serve under Lord Lucifer, the girl looks at his eyes once again, but strangely. The man didn't show any reaction and merely listen attentively. Since we are not like those of the 72 pillars, we do not have any inherent powers and merely born with demon physiology and demon magic, it is us who will study our own magic and choose an element that works for us at least that's what it should be, the girl paused as her lower lips tremble for some strange reason, unlike the others I was born with the element of ice as my magic element. When my esteemed mother gave birth to me she said I freeze the entire room and the doctor overseeing my birth. The boy nodded, and seeing her done with her explanation, he looks at her expectantly, so that is why Shes here crying, he thought to himself. The man was strangely silent and merely looking at her imploringly, the girl probably guessed what the man was thinking, as she finally opens her mouth once again and started speaking. 
because I was born with ice element, everyone thought that I would be a prodigy because of my massive magic and my strong element, but no matter what I do I cannot control it, at this the girl started leaking out tears once again, everything I touched would turn into ice, everyone is afraid of me, and no one would even try to befriend me in fear of being frozen. The man silently watches the girl started sobbing once again, sighing the man gently drops down with a soft thud, earning the girl's attention as he walks towards her. Once he was in front of her she was now looking up to him, unknown to her the man was hiding his presence so that no one in the castle would sense him, and the fact that she didn't know he was there until he called her out was strangely forgotten. Let me see your hands, the man reached out, but the girl hastily drew back, not in fear of him, but in fear of her accidentally freezing him. You can't, I'm going to freeze you, the girl warns as her grey eyes trembles while the man gently smiles at her. It'll be fine, the man finally managed to grab her hand much to the little girl's horror, but surprisingly the man did not freeze see. The girl was too shocked to utter any words due to this being the very first time this ever happens. You don't need to be scared, you'll never be alone again, after saying that the flower in her lap glows and become a beautiful snow-colored bracelet with a snowflake insignia, it automatically latched in her hand. The man stood up while gently patting her head and walks behind her, she turns to see, but was surprised to see him gone, and in his place was a crystal ball with snowflakes inside, taking the form of a fox with ten tails. Do not worry, you will never be alone again for I'll be watching over you, the words were carried by the wind, and despite it being winter, the wind was so warm that it almost melted her heart. Zero 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 zero. Pack. Ouch. Middleton exclaimed in pain and rage as she rubs the growing lump in her head, she was caught sneaking away to escape her morning duty. Where do you think you're going? Naruto questioned with a grin on his face do you really think you can run away from me? I have sealed you and Kalwerner inside the shop, so you'll never be able to leave this place, he grabs her from the back of her neck now, come you still have a toilet to clean. No. I am tired of cleaning the toilet. I have done nothing but get intimate with the bowl in this last two weeks. Let me go. The fallen angel tried to struggle, but she cannot escape the blonde man's clutch, this past two weeks he had been overseeing them, as she and her partner Tens cleans the shop and the toilet. True to his word, the man went to their headquarters with them and talked to Azazel about what happened, to say that the leader of the fallen angel factions was disappointed was an understatement to say the least. But of course Azazel had forgiven them knowing that they didn't know that they were being used, although he cannot let them go unpunished, Azazel decided to lend them to Naruto as his workers. And that is why the both of them, Middleton Kalawerner, had become his permanent worker with their position being the janitor, and if he decided to hire again, they will not be promoted and instead would just become senior janitors. She didn't know why, but when he was talking to Azazel, this blonde guy was speaking with the fallen angel's leader, as if the leader of Grigori was nothing but a child, and even once she never see their leader react badly whenever the mysterious address him rudely. As such this guy is a mystery not only to her, but also with Kalawerner, Azazel told them to obey him and treats him like a superior, as such Kalawerner being the loyal servant of Azazel, readily agreed and gave herself completely to the blonde, at least as a janitor, but, her she still have her dignity, so it is natural for her to complain, and trying to escape every few instances she gets. Even if you say that, it is your punishment or do you want something more harsher, Naruto grins evilly at her, which made the blonde-haired fallen angel tremble in fear, you should be like her, he motioned with his head, and following it, Middle saw Kalawerner dutifully cleaning the dishes. HMP, suck up, Middle grumbles as she stood up and dusted her frilly made outfit and went straight towards Kalawerner to help her wash the dishes. Naruto raised an eyebrow when he saw where she was going. Where are you going? Middle looked at him with an annoyed expression. Didn't you tell me to help? Naruto chuckles and Middle did not like the sound of that chuckle one bit. I said be more like her, not help her, you have your own job. The hour kidding me, Middle looked like she was about to have a heart attack, and the look in her face was so funny that he cracked a small smile. Yep, to the toilet you go. ARRGG. I will not forget this you blonde bastard. Middle's scream of rage was heard all over the neighborhood. The hour blonde too, from her position Kalawerner snipped earning another yell from Middle. Shut up you suck up bitch. After that the two fallen angels started trading jabs at one another, shouting back and forth, while Naruto merely shook his head and walked outside, sighing at the feeling of warm air brushing his skin. Having two sexy and beautiful girls was good and all but it's not like there is no downside, in fact there is because the moment Sona found out about the interrogation that ensued was not good to say the least, to say that Sona was displeased would be a massive understatement, she had really given him a long and thorough lecture. At least it was not as severe as back then when she found out about him knowing Azazel. But still, the fact that she wasn't visiting him for this past two weeks really meant that Shes angry at him, but it's not like there is anything that he can do about it, well, he does, but he just doesn't have the heart to send these girls away to scourge and live on a rundown and abandoned church. 
How troublesome, I guess he'll just go and relieve some of my frustration, might as well visit that airhead, Naruto muttered to himself, and was about to go to the underworld and visit his employer, when suddenly his eyes started glowing and visions enters his head. A sly smile appeared on his face so, someone will finally find the first key huh? Location change. Where in the world is that thing? A frustrated shout rang within the dark cave as a short-hooded person stomp its feet on the ground and it stomp its feet on the ground due to the frustration. Due to the person stomping the hood covering the person's head and face come undone, revealing her to be an attractive young girl. The girl has a very doll-like appearance with long wavy light blonde hair and has a pair of dark red eyes, her face was so beautiful that if she stopped moving, she would've been mistaken as a western doll, her skin was so pale that if she closed her eyes and stopped moving, she would be mistaken for a corpse, her ears unlike any normal person her ears are a bit longer looking like an elf ear. Her outfit consists of a red dress similar to that of a medieval dress that princesses wore. On her hand was a silver metal band with a strange leaf insignia in it, the strange thing is the pointed end of the leaf was spinning madly as if a compass malfunctioning. She had been keeping this special artifact for a very long time now, when this was given to her she was told that it was a very special device that will lead her to the greatest treasure that has been hidden from the world, the one who gave this to her, also said that the treasure that has been hidden to the world was left by the man who had created the whole planet. That must be one heck of a treasure if the one who left it was such a powerful man. She always believed that the treasure was nothing but a myth, so imagine her shock when the device started acting and started pointing into strange direction while giving some coordinates, she didn't know what compelled her to follow the signals, but she did, and now she's inside a cave located at the deepest part of the highest mountain in the world. After countless days of walking and gliding, she finally reached the dead end, and now there is nothing, no treasure or any holy relics, she should have not believed in such myths, and should not get too overexcited now she's left disappointed. Due to her frustration she threw the relic in her hand, only to regret it once it left her hand, it hit the solid wall with a loud clang, but instead of breaking into two, it just bounced and fell down the ground. Ugh, should not let my temper get to me, the girl muttered to herself as she flicked her bangs away from her face in an elegant manner and walked towards the relic to pick it up, once she did the whole cave started trembling, startling the girl. Uh, don't tell me you are going to collapse. She murmured as if she was expecting the cave-like labyrinth to answer, but to her surprise a secret door started opening in front of her, her eyes widened before she realized why the compass was acting strangely it was due to the secret passage. Well, at least my temper helped me solve the puzzle, Shes starting to wonder if Shes going crazy due to her constant talking to herself, of course being inside this dark cave, for who knows how long without food it was bound to happen. Shaking her head the girl entered the secret passage and started walking for who knows how long again. Once she reached the end of the passage, she saw a single green door covered with strange-looking vines, but the thing that managed to get her attention the most was the strange markings carved in the door. It was written in ancient Japanese, had she been any other person she would have panic immediately, but due to what she is, she has universal understanding of all kind of languages and alphabets. Okay. It says deep within your soul is the key that will open the door to the place filled with wonders, open the door and let the magic in. The girl raised an eyebrow, that is some strange code, but before she could ponder to what it means the girl immediately drew back when a strange golden light started emitting from the door, but strangely this light wasn't hurting her. When the light died down the door was not only missing, but now she was in a completely different location, Shes currently standing inside a temple made of marble with a strange altar made of marble in front of her. She started climbing the stairs and stops in front of the altar, and then she realized that it was never an altar, but a tomb made of marble resembling an altar. On top of the altar was a small stone tablet with faded code in it, and strange has the initials of N then U, with the last letters being Kai. I can't read this the girl muttered to herself, not because of the strange language that has been used, but because the letters are clearly faded, so with a shrug, she gently picks it up and put it on the ground, so she can push the lid of tomb. How why is it not budging? The girl exclaimed in annoyance as she tried and tried and tried to push open the tomb, but no matter how much strength she put she couldn't open the tomb, even though her strength far surpassed those of ordinary humans and mid-class devils. She had twice once again only to fail, she was about to give up to throw a fit when she saw the strange swirling crest on the tomb and the words saying. Life is full of challenges, it will bring you down and will try to keep you on the ground, but if you have enough strength to look up, then you certainly have the strength to get back up, keep on going, do not give up. Well, that's motivating, okay one more try, pushing as much magic as she can in her body to the point her eyes started glowing as if it is going to explode, she pushes the lid with a mighty yell. Bang. The lid fell down on the ground and she almost collapsed due to her overexerting herself. What is this? She asked to herself after regaining her breath, she was looking at the treasure that was said to be owned by the man who shaped the planet. 
There, lying on a golden cloth was a six-foot-long sandy-colored staff, it has the same appearance as the staff used by monks, but this one has many differences, for instance instead of a circular ring at the top, it was crescent-shaped with strange circle in the middle, depicting the image of a tanuki. Hesitantly the girl reached out to pick the staff, but then suddenly the ground started shaking with the walls cracking, for a second she worries that the altar would collapse with her, but then it stopped. She was about to sigh in relief when the wall got smashed by a massive creature that she had never seen before, it was a giant brown tanuki looking monster with strange markings in it with strange eyes. It roared at her and looked like it was about to pounce on her, on instinct alone she picks the staff and swings it with all her might to defend herself, but instead of getting hit, a tear appeared in front of her and started sucking the beast, as if the staff was sucking it. What? She looks up when the whole place suddenly turns dark and her eyes widened when she saw a massive tsunami of golden sand downing upon her. Later that day the girl would disappear with the staff, well the citizens will be left confused as to what happened. For that the day, the mountain known as Mount Everest was no longer a mountain covered in ice, but a tall mountain covered in golden sand. The first key, the great staff of the desert has been found. Thanks for watching.